Hey guys, how's it going? Getting more done on the bike. Got a few uh, hours to go play with it. A couple of things I don't like. One is the handlebar setup. If you look, I welded the neck up on it, but it's weak. It's got cracked all the way around. And the end of the bolt with the wedge on it is rusted together. So this bolt is going to break. So I was trying to play around with different things while it was on there, but not very happy with how strong that it's going to be. So I went around the hoard, started poking and prodding, and I grabbed the one set of handlebars out of something off another girl's bike. It's got a set of matching grips on it, and the width is a little wider. Those are a little on the skinny side for me. I might not show scale wise, but it is. And the other one was uh, this girl's bike I kind of brought out too. Possibly I may uh, grab that seat and uh, see if that is something in between the two that we have to go use, but who knows. So first, I figure we'll get into the handlebars. We'll get that thing either cut off or broken out and drive a punch down and try to get them apart and see what else we can replace it with. Yeah, it's just got that, that gummy weird, like, you know, <laughs> so you can, you can feel it's twisting. Let's go give her. I'm pretty sure it's going to snap on us. There's no good way to get down there with any kind of penetrant or heat. A little bit of length. I'm whacking it with a hammer. And what that's got is a wedge down below that uh, you're able to get it. Speedy. Yeah, there it goes. That's a what the happens. So we are going to need something a little longer than that. Let's try it without the washer. And we're going to try driving out the, the wedge that's down there. Oh, something else. Yeah, let's try a piece of threaded rod. Not saying the rest of it's not rusted together, but at least that part's out. Three. Shove a magnet in there, get that wedge out of there. Let's just see what we got for. Let's see how that looks. I had the bars on there and I was kind of playing around with the two seats that were on the bench. I'm kind of liking the longer one now. I think if I could put it roughly in that spot, it would be fairly decent. At first I was trying to make a, a tube that kind of comes up and, you know, attaches to the original mount. But what I might do is maybe we'll come off of this one. We'll take the, this, we can slice it down. Maybe we'll just weld a steel plate that goes right to this bolt. Right here, we grab that front mount, and then maybe we can grab that guy and that guy. And, you know, come straight down and pick up, tap into the frame right there. But I think the center's all bent up anyway, you know, it's not like we're trashing anything that's historic. So we take these three out and we separate the pan and maybe we see you about to getting some black leather or something to try and make a cover for that and then we'll move, move forward. Now this is going to be one of those times where you get to try something new you never tried before. So I took the three nuts off the seat and that was able to get me that part of it off. And then it had those uh, little one-way keepers. Bent them up, got that apart and that made for the two sections like that. My only thing is, I grabbed some leather that I had, which is this. The problem is it's kind of, I don't know how well that's going to be to us trying to be able to fold that around that corner. I wonder, we got enough of it. Maybe we'll take and we'll slice a section out of it and I don't know, maybe hot water. We'll try soaking it in hot water, see if it gets really pliable. 
I just don't know. I don't, I don't know anything about it. So instead of going on the internet and looking it up, why don't we just try winging it? Sometimes life is more fun that way. Let's go do that. And uh, I'll throw it in the microwave, get some water heated up. We'll throw some fabric in there and, and see if it gets m much more pliable. Plus, I think we gotta we gotta get some kind of foam or something for this too to give it a little bit more padding. Figure why the uh, water's heating up. Let's take some spray glue. <laughs> Just went every direction. Huh? Let's. Spray some foam up. Same on this side. We'll just stick that right to it and then we'll carve back. Let that sit up for a little bit and then we'll flip them over, stick them together, and cut them apart. In about a minute. Let's see. Let me go with there. Let's try to get the center to touch first. Yeah, just pinch it down. Come back with the. And that does not like cutting with that, huh? What do you think, scissors? Scissors are a better knife, or maybe we can come through. This Give it some length. The uh, electric knife. I think it's time for the electric knife. Let's see how that well that works for us. See if we can cut our fingers off with that. That's much nicer. I'm getting nervous. I'm good. I think a little fine tuning. Paul Cox would be proud, huh? Just leave it like that. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, let's go see how our hot water's doing. So I was using a microwave to heat the water up, and it looks like the I had it like that, and I think the part that was not under the water did some kind of funky looking, you know. Ruined that, burned it, overheated it, whatever it was. But it looks like this seems a lot more floppable. And again, we have a bunch of it to work with. So now I'm just heating the water up and I'll cut another piece out and I'll throw it in the water. This might even come back too if I soak it. Yeah. New piece. Ah, oh, the witch's brew. So I left about, I don't know, two inches all the way around. Let's see. You can see how kind of if it is now. Let's see what happens. Probably would have been better with like a cookie sheet, right? Let that puppy cook for, I don't know. We'll sit in there for about five minutes and we'll take it back out and see how it is. The water might cool down by then too. Stay. I'm trying to get the whole thing under. Come on. <laughs> we'll just keep weighting it down with crap. There you go. Oh, that popped up. <laughs> what are we going to do for an inch more water? All right, well, let that sit. Yeah, it's probably been about five, ten minutes. Let's go walk out back, see what else I had for trailers. Trailers, for seats. 
Let's see. Is that doing anything for us? Why does that center seem like it wants to pucker up? I would think it would expand. We should be able to stretch it, maybe. If this doesn't work, I wonder if I might go to Saver. Savers is like a uh, Salvation Army kind of place, used clothing place. Maybe I could find an old leather coat or know, a leather something that it's it's thinner and softer. Let's see where. That's where it's going to be an issue. Is trying to get it to to bunch. Did I screw up? No. I thought I, I, thought I glued it on the wrong piece. <laughs> and you can't glue it down. You know how would you get it all tucked over, tucked in, and then cranked down? Staple it like you do a pulse receipt, maybe. Hmm. Now I'm gonna say that that is just too way way too thick for doing what I want to do. So I went back in my my scrap board. I got this is really thin. It's the wrong color. Unfortunately, that's what we got. So there's a white that seems fairly pliable too. I think this is yeah this is more like what we're using now uh maybe we'll try going dry going in dry i'm gonna take some spray glue we'll spray the foam down on the seat if i have this wet hope not well if we spray that foam down we spray that down we just kind of try pulling it over all the way around this stuff is Almost papery. Yeah, let's give that a shot. I'm gonna hang it in front of the heat first, get it warmed up, and I'll do the same with the seat. Let the whatever that is, if that's water or whatnot, dry off. Hey, right, let's try. I hit the edges with a wire wheel. So the glue out more of a fighting chance. Probably watch where I'm getting the glue, huh? The same for this guy. Hope it's the right side. <laughs> Let's let that guy kind of do its thing. both of those tack up and see if we can work that around. I gotta get the, the back of the seat too. Uh, call it good. Maybe they got chances are. <laughs> Not very good. that way so we're gonna want to go call it right there ah, you suck you suck no good oh no <laughs> Close on that corner there. Kind of screwed up. So these are probably the first two that need to get pulled up and around. But we are going to need. Oh, that 
help us more so. Seems a little on the brittle side. Yeah. Yep, this stuff is no good. I'm gonna I'm gonna move forward anyway. Just because I want to go through the practice of seeing if this will work or not. Not a failure, it's just a learning experience, right? Let's see how, <laughs> how wrinkly that would be. <laughs> that just sucks. <laughs> well, I ended up uh, leaving that brown leather on there. I kind of cleaned it up the best I could, kind of molded it around. And then I just took... Uh, coffee sack cut it up and used that I didn't glue the center I kind of let it float it's probably what I should do do with the leather too so it was able to kind of stretch out where it needed to I think that might have been what part of my problem was but I think we can take those guys down sandwich that together bolt it back up I should hold the corners in do you think um, I might be able to shoot that black? Yeah, what do we got to lose, right? Could always just put more sack on it. <laughs> put your sack on your seat. It'll be easy to. Um, what's going to happen as the fabric moves, the color underneath is going to. Shine through. And that might be okay. Especially um, once it gets to beat up a little bit. Let's go put that in front of the heater. I bolted that back together. Not terrible. Something different. So I think now the next thing is we're going to try to get it right about, I'm thinking right about there. Be good for my, my size too. Get it back. So I don't know, I, I want to come off of that guy right there. And I don't know if I want to try putting that back in and having a plate that comes back. I'm thinking that's probably my best bet. And we'll take... I don't even know where it ended up. There it is. So we'll slice that guy right off. That'll fit down inside there. We'll slice that right off and maybe we'll try to come up with some kind of thick plate coming back to grab that bolt. Let's see how that works out. So I cut a piece of metal. It's a piece of a hinge. Some thick kind of something something and bolted that in between there so we can have a little sliding surface that's not not bad again we got to come with two bars down to support the back of the seat but i had initially made it longer so i was thinking something like that i'll stay and then of course you know grind the brackets down after it's well done that would make it so it fits me better but i don't know if it kind of throws off the scale of the bike a little bit too much hmm. maybe i'll throw a tack on it and uh, hop up there and see how how i fit can't put any weight on it let's see how this goes
it spread out nicely for me. My knees won't be so close to the handlebars when I'm making a turn, you know, I'm trying to pedal. We're going with it. I say we built two more rods down to the bottom now so that uh, it can be stable. So I kind of went off building the rear struts to help support the seat. And uh, I just stole the other nuts off that other bike over there. And got a big washer, just wedged it in there and then just weld to that. I did the same up there, it's just a washer. Crimped in the bolt and I got a couple of tacks on that. And it, it was um, a set of uh, fireplace tongs is what they were and I cut the uh, there's the pivot point was right there they were like scissors that came across together for picking up logs and whatnot that's the ends of them and I like the little curve that's in it just kind of makes it uh, instead of just a straight line you know because it you know this is flat this has a little bit of a curve this has more of a curve we could dress all this up. I'm not worried about that. I'll, I'll thin this up and make it look more, you know, grind that round, make it look more apart. But it's, in, it's mocked up in a pretty good spot now. And we got suspension. And speaking of suspension, I was hunting through the box that was over there of the uh, recently acquired Schwinn parts. And it was a set of these and these guys the strut rods that go to the front there would be a a plate up here that goes across and then it has two holes for each side of this and this is uh, um, for strength for the front fork so we may go with those I, the one picture I saw of this frame that it didn't have the tank and stuff on it but it did have struts on the front end so I'd like to kind of put those back in we could shoot these black or just you know knock off whatever's on them and Leave what's underneath. So I think I want to go on to now that I know where the seat's going to be and you know roughly where the handles are, handlebars are going to be. What we want to do for making this guy turn on and off, and it came with this adjustable spring-loaded. damper or shock I guess you call it put probably mounted either way on like that come off of that spot then it has this conglomeration of a uh, lock lever don't know this looks way too modern to begin with not that we can't age it but I don't know what we're gonna do with that guy like where we're we gonna tap into we could weld a bung coming off of the frame somewhere. It came with a clamp. Where'd the clamp go? There it is. That's the clamp it came with, which that was adjustable earlier. I had it and then right there on the post. I just think it's kind of, you know, it's kind of ugly looking. So we can get rid of that if we want and just put a bolt on it make this a little less intrusive. But we still have the cable to figure out where it goes. Try it the other way around. That'd probably be our better. Come up off of that or Can we do that? Does it matter if it's facing upward or downward? The lever is going to be the opposite direction, right? Yeah, this is trying to, this would have to pull. You want to push against it. I think. You want to push against it. If we adjust it so that it's a pull, it won't have any spring. So if we pull, we pull it down to a certain length. The cable is going to determine that, and the spring is really not going to do anything because the cable is going to hold it fixed. Where this way, you let it out. The, the cable can go slack, and then the spring can. The spring has the com capacity to take some dampening from the tire. 
Let me think about that. You guys can too. Well, a big part of me really wants to make a shifter on the side, linkage going back, pivoting, kind of like what I have on the uh, the board track racer. Actually, most of the bikes have the same kind of mechanical setup. But I'm concerned that there's a reason why this dampener came with this setup. And I have a feeling if I try making something fixed that I will not have the drivability that it should have so i'm going to go with this if i find later on i want to change it up or we this doesn't work well or whatever the reason we can still kind of uh, move around i think if it's got to come apart anyway but i think if we take that spring and uh, maybe paint that black and then rub a little bit off and then the aluminum we can kind of do what we did to this i know it looks modern but uh we'll try to age it as good as as good as we can and unfortunately that's kind of the area it needed to be it needed to be when you relax the cable that wherever that is is making contact with the wheel but if the wheel needs to push back it can on the spring whereas i go the other way around if i try running it down here when i release the cable it's pushing against the tire it's it's pulling against the tire all the time on the cable and you're using the cable for the tension that's it put it against the tire and it doesn't have any spring back capacity because you're, you're dead on with the cable the springs really not doing anything other than a return spring so unfortunately it kind of has to go up there and it looked better down below but again what are we gonna do the cable is about three feet too long and this is the setup that came with it. It basically just pulls the cable up on a cam. It looks like it's missing whatever half of the other half of this mount was. A couple of wedges or something. Whatever it tightened up on. So we've got to take it apart, cut that cable down, and we'll try to wrap it around the frame. Right now it's got a you can release it no problem but it's got a lot of drag if you try to tension it so right now it's pulled it to the on position and now it's rubbing against the tire so let's take the cable off and out and try to make the jacket the length we want and then pull the cable through hopefully cut the cable <laughs> and make it the right length for that Yes, I made up a cable for it. I cut off. That's how much we got rid of. I clipped both ends. Both ends were collapsed on themselves. Where'd they go? Yeah. I don't know if you can see it. The insides of it. See how they're all bunched up on each other? So that was causing some drag on the cable. That was on each end of it. So I cut them back and then used the best part of the cable that I could, but part of it's missing its jacket. Then I shot oil in it on each end with the cable removed from it and then took the air gun and blew the oil through so that the whole side was lubricated and then ran everything back through. That's what we have for extra cable. I'm just going to leave it long for now because the end of it's sealed up and you can feed it through. And quick, do a couple tie wraps on it just to see where I want to try to maintain its its place. I might probably tuck it more here. And then that the handlebars were able to rotate without hitting. And it does. And this was the bracket that was for here that would have held that, the pin. And the pin had a... Uh, the way it was set up was that pin went through this and then you ran the bolt in and it locked it wherever it went to go be. So I said, well, I'll just use that same setup. I just stuck it in the drill and put it over in the sander until I knocked it down to that length. And then underneath it's keyed right there. And I just came back with a grinder and clipped it so it, it can't, you know, rack from side to side. It, it has to maintain the... Uh, that direction i'm gonna leave this long for now in case you i want to use it for something and if not we'll just clip it with the uh the wheel and it kind of matches that we'll change that hardware out for something that maybe looks older 
so that works now it's still it's it's a lot of energy for to to bring it back on you could do it but what i should probably do is oil the inside of that too and we eat a little So much for paint sticking to that now, right? It'll be fine. That's that guy, that's neutral. Let's nice drive. And we have adjustability with it too. We could change the tension on it here. We could change the length of it by how much cable we let in and out. And there's a, uh, a jack screw right there. Plus we can move the tire. Yeah, so I'm happy with that for now and later on if I don't like it I may change up and make like the old style fashion you know linkage on the side like I've done on some of the others I think it would be a better look but let's see if we can get it running first uh, we need a throttle it has kind of the same deal with uh, the cable being 10 miles long so we'll set that up for whatever here is I remember what we had for a throttle if you even had one build the end up so I can kind of grind it into some sort of barrel think is it gonna work <laughs> I need quite a bit so yeah I'm going to do that much. I'm going to make something to pour it into. I had to go make herself a new end for the cable. I just got done whittling it down. Let's see how close we get. Oh, she's close. I have to do a little, a little spread. on that but let's run that down it's the carb put that end on there we go I made the cable a little on the long side I'm kind of out far on the adjuster but we could get both bottle would be nice if I put an adjuster up here too got a grip with an adjuster you know so you can take the slack out of that side you're fine do some tie wraps on them just to try to steer everything in the right direction. I don't know. I think uh, 
We got most of the mechanicals. We still have to do the petcock. And that was soaking forever over here. How's that stuff doing? I wanted to make sure that this stuff didn't turn all gummy on me. This is the fuel it was going to be using on it. I think we'll be okay. If not, we could change it out. So I'll put that back together. That can go on, get soldered on. Cut that back, we'll put that there, and then we could run a run a fuel line to that. So we have the shifter, the throttle, rear brakes is already in the pedals. Change the tires over. Uh, headlight, tail light, we can kind of look into. We'll probably fill out some of the bike a little bit. We can put something on the back here. And also maybe like a license plate or something. Maybe we go. Can we wrap it around the. Maybe we'll fold that right down there. Let it cover that. Kind of like that. So I think. That might be the next area. We can put a reflector down here. And then if we can get like a tail light, maybe right here, right in the center of the seat. And I think I got a dynamo. I might just go with a dynamo. That's what that front light is right now. It just dynamo is a little generator, goes on, goes on the wheel, rubs. I don't think it's, this thing's gonna be very fast. I'm gonna say 20, you know, that's more than fast enough for it. 20, maybe 25. Um, so the dynamo runs on the tire. I put it on one, the green, the green one with the six and a half horse and that bike's too fast. I, I smoked it, it seized up. <laughs> First run. And there's a wire cord. So you get the little jar where it kicks on the wheel and it makes power and then we'll do the same on the tail light. I think I got a bunch of that stuff in the back. I may let that go for tomorrow. It's getting kind of late. Maybe we'll put a video together for you guys. Does that sound? This might be the end, I'm not sure. But uh, if it is, see ya. If it's not, I'll see you in a minute. You say, see if we can put a bow. I was kind of hoping for more around. I could probably take a hose clamp. How about I just beat it with a hammer? Covering that shock. So is it going to get shorter? So it's got to be done in that position. Hmm. Hmm. 